So um, let's get started. Uh, okay. So let's get started. So this is going to cover the one through three, right? Yes. Yes. And then I saw in here there's a bio worksheet one through two ocean profiles in that, so we need to put that one. That's this. That's this one. Yeah. Because there's an extra one on here now. Oh, you put the syllabus. Yeah. So. Okay. I was do like. Do you have extra worksheets by any chance? Uh, not right now. Oh. Yeah, but I mean you don't need them right now, anyways. Yeah. Those are for you guys to do at home, not to fill out any bunch. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Let's, let's get this started, all right? So we're gonna talk about ocean profiles and power reproduction, okay? So if we're lucky, we'll get to cover both of these, but we'll at least get to get through the first part, all right? So, all right, let's just take a look at this title, first of all. Ocean profiles. Do we know what that is already? Is we it? talked about the temperature, temperature salinity. And yeah, salinity. yeah, we talked about it last uh -huh. week, just for a brief 10 minutes, right? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, what about temperature salinity? Like, go on. So, um, else the more you move to the right of the axis, it's the, the water is warmer. And then the okay, the, for the temperature the, profile. The, the, depth, the more depth in the ocean, the colder. Yeah, the yeah, ocean. okay. Right, right, right. Okay, so you're basically telling me what the temperature profile looks like, right? Good, okay. That's an example of an ocean profile, right? But there's other ocean profiles. What is the point of these profiles, though? They show, what do they show? Temperature change. Oh, it doesn't have to be temperature, though, right? They just show some sort of the characteristic. characteristic of the some ocean. characteristic about yeah. the ocean. Characteristic throughout temperatures. What? Throughout time? Not time. <laughs> <laughs> Not time. Oh, so throughout the world? Like Not the world. Ocean? Throughout the, no, I think about why it's vertical. Oh, yeah. so like, as you go deeper, it goes Yeah, deeper. yeah, throughout the ocean's depth, right? Yeah. From the surface yeah. to the bottom, yeah. right? Okay, so it just shows some sort of characteristic and how it changes from surface to the bottom. All right, good, ocean profiles, we got those. We'll talk about five other profiles in addition to the temperature profile. Um, primary production, right? You guys may not have heard of primary production before, Primary production, well, it has to do with producing something, all right? What do you think we're producing, or what do you think, what organism do you think is involved in this? Community? Um, production. Plants? Yeah, plants, exactly. Mm -hmm. See, when, when we hear the word production, I want you guys to think of producer, and hopefully you might be able to associate plants with being producers. So primary production has something to do with plants and photosynthesis, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, if we have enough time to finish all the ocean profiles, we'll be able to talk about a little bit about primary production, maybe some examples of primary producers and what they do in the ocean, right? Okay, so let's get started. Okay, I have here the temperature profile of uh, three different places on Earth. See, the Earth is divided into different latitudes Okay, they go north and south, and the different latitudes have different temperatures, right? So there's different regions, like we got the polar at the top and at the very bottom, right? Get closer, we get something called temperate. Over here, it causes mid latitudes, right? Okay, temperate, and then in the middle, the warmest region on average is called the tropics, right? So the point is, each location has a different temperature profile, but they actually all obey the same rules. Right, the same rules as being, let's look at the surface of the ocean. The surface is warmer, warmer, warmer on average. Look, it's, it's further towards the right, okay? Why? Because the surface waters are closest to, to the, the sun. sun. Yeah, they have the most sunlight, they get irradiated, they're warmer, right? Okay, um, similarly, amongst all three areas on Earth, when you go down to the bottom, what do you see? Plants. Oh, no, no, hold on, get down to the bottom of the ocean. Fish. <laughs> what do you see in the trend? Not what oh, you see in the ocean. It's trend. Oh, it's colder. It gets colder, right? Okay. See, the water at the bottom is colder. Okay. okay. It's colder for a couple reasons. The first reason is, well, now it's not close to the sun, so it gets less heat. But second, we have to realize that temperature starts to 
play a role in the density of water, okay? You guys know what density is? What is it? It's like, it it's like describes... It's like the mass of mass. So yeah, yeah, it's kind of like how heavy it yeah. is, right? Yeah. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. Okay, thickness, yeah, I, I like that. It's a very colloquial term, right? Um, how much matter fits in a certain volume, right? So how heavy something is, that's a good way to d for a layman to describe <coughs> density. And in general, cold things are denser than warm mm -hmm. ones, all right? So if something's cold and it's denser, then it's gonna sink to the bottom, all right? Something that's denser has no business being above something that is warmer, all right? Or that's less dense. So if you ever find dense things on top of a warm thing, it'll sink down and end up on the bottom anyways, all right? So look, at the bottom of all these oceans, the water's colder down there because the cold water sinks, right? And it's also cold because it's far from the sun. Okay, so there we have it. Now, the interesting thing about this is even though the trend is the same at all locations, there is a diff the surface temperatures are different, but there's also a similarity. Look at the bottom. What can you notice about the bottom no matter where you're at? So regardless of where you're at, the temperature will decrease the, the more depth. It will depth. decrease, but what will it decrease to? Between 60 and 100. Uh, oh, no, 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 you're looking at the wrong temperature. axis. The temperature, yeah, what will it decrease to? Temperature will be five. About five, five right, five. about five yeah. degrees C. You guys see that? No five. matter where you guys are at, yeah, so like, even though the tropics is warmer than here, or the polar, when you go to the bottom of the ocean, you're still gonna end up at the same cold temperature, okay? The bottom of the ocean is the same uniform cold temperature throughout the world, right? No matter where you're at. The only difference in the ocean temperature is the surface, right? So because of that, you know, you get like a more pronounced change, you know, in the tropics because you're going from a warmer to the same temperature, whereas here, the surface is kind of already cold, right? So it doesn't have much of a pronounced change, right? So speaking of the pronounced change, what am I referring to? The pronounced change. No. The pronounced change. Do you guys remember that? The thermal decline. Yeah. Hydrothermal Yeah, yeah it's okay. Okay, you're getting a little ahead, but well, let's just let's just uh, stop at thermal decline. Right? Okay. Thermal decline which is the depth at which the temperature changes, starts changing. No, nah, not starts changing, but it changes the at what change? Yeah, the fastest. Mm -hmm. oh, hot and cold, cold to hot. Yeah, yeah, okay, the, the temperature changes the fastest, okay, you see, right over here. Look, you go above, it's warm all of a sudden. You go slightly below, it's cold, cold all of a sudden. What if you had a depth at 600 right here. You go above, cold, you go below, cold. still cold, so it didn't change that much. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So like, in this case, the thermal climb, you go above and below, there's a drastic <coughs> change, right? So remember, the depth at which the temperature changes the fastest, it's called the thermal climb. You know, um, I don't have the video to show you guys, but I did watch this one video before of these guys. They dove super deep in the ocean, okay? They were on rebreathers, which means like, when you breathe out the carbon dioxide, the machine recycles it into oxygen. So you can stay down there forever, basically. And, well not forever, but for a long time. And they were down for hours and hours, and they were, they were able to get super deep, and they were in cold water. When they started their ascent, they said they felt like they were swimming in pee. Why did it feel so warm? Because they crossed the, crossed the thermal the yeah, you guys get that? Like, like they crossed the thermal climb and so they suddenly felt a drastic temperature change just of a small uh, depth change, right? Small depth change but a drastic temperature change. Okay, so there you go. That's the thermal climb. You know, uh, we talked about this last week so it's not too crazy, right? Okay, but um, you know, one interesting thing I've noticed is if you only think difference between these things is the trend's the same, the bottom temperature's the same, but the top is different, right? The top is different, there's less of a pronounced change when it's already cold at the top <coughs> in the polar areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
I wouldn't say it takes longer. I'd say just if it's already cold, it doesn't have to get much colder. So it kind of just like the gradient, it's, it kind of eases its way. Okay. Whereas this one, it has to somehow go from this hot to that hot. So at some point, it has to steeply drop. OK. So let's move on to the next profile that we have. This one is a new profile. Hopefully, with our knowledge of profiles, we'll be able to decipher these very well. Okay, this is called the salinity profile. Do you guys remember, or do you guys know what salinity measures? Oh, salt. Salt, OK. So if it's high salinity, what can you tell me about that water? It's salty. It's salty, OK. It tastes really salty. There's a lot of water, salt in it. OK, good. So here we have the salinity profile. Let's, let's take a look at this. Um, can you guys analyze this? What do we get at the top of the ocean? Um, the more salt. Okay, mm -hmm. it's the saltiest, mm -hmm. right? You can tell because it's furthest to the right. To the right. right, yeah. So the top of the ocean looks to be the saltiest. Okay. Um, over here, what happens? We go down in depth a little bit, and less salt. Salt. it becomes slightly less salty. And then as you keep going down, then it kind of stabilizes. It kind of stabilizes, but I mean, compared to here. It becomes a little bit more salty. It becomes a little bit more salty um, up until this point, and then it stabilizes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That was a good analysis, right? This is a salinity profile. It starts out relatively salty, becomes less salty, and then st slowly increases all the way down to the bottom, where it's mostly the same, right? Okay. So remember when I talked about density and the te how the temperature affects it? You know, the warm makes it less dense. The cold makes it more dense. And it's warmer at the top and colder at the bottom, and that makes a lot of sense because warm water is less dense and it should be at the top, and cold water is more dense and it should be at the bottom. <coughs> right. So, do you guys know how salinity affects density? What do you guys think? So, Michelle thinks that salinity, increased salinity, makes water denser. No. What do you guys think? You guys think it makes it denser? You think it makes it lighter if you add salt to it? No. What do you guys think? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you guys, it um it makes it heavy, right? It does make it denser. Um, you can do a little experiment, right? If you had two liquids and okay. one of salty, and you cook. make one salty. They tell you to put salt in the water. Oh, okay. that's different. That's slightly different. Uh, they, they tell you to put salt in the water when you're cooking because it raises its boiling point. Mm -hmm. So it makes it hotter. Yeah, but that's not about its density, okay. right? Um, its density, we can look at it in different ways, right? So we could take, you know, some fresh water and some salt water. And there's two things we could do. First thing is we can dye them different colors. So we'll want to dye the, one of them red and one of them blue, right? Have them dye the fresh water blue, dye the salt water red. You dump them into the same container, and you'll see that the red salt water floats or sinks below with the blue fresh water floating on top. It's pretty crazy. Does right. that really does that? Happen? Uh -huh. It does. It doesn't actually happen. So maybe you're not convinced. I'll tell you something that you can actually do yourself that is less direct, but um, it's probably something you'll believe. Did you guys know that eggs float in salt water? But they don't float in regular water. Mm -hmm. right? Why does it float in salt water, but not the regular water? Well, here's the thing. Depending on how heavy the liquid is, right? light things float on top of heavy things. Mm -hmm. So if you want the egg to float, <coughs> then you need to make the water heavier. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So. If it floats in the salt water and not the regular water, then we can conclude that the salt water was heavier. Right. Okay, because light things float on top of heavy things, and eggs will float in salt water but not regular water. Okay, so if you guys know this, or you could just go home and test it out yourself, right? Put the egg in the salt water, it'll float. Then, yeah, that's what you know. You know, like I heard some people um, bringing up the fact that we have those, like, those like relaxation chambers or something, or pools, or full of Epsom salt, and people float in them. Oh, that's right? fun. 
yeah, those spa kind of things, right? They're salty and people just float in them. And uh, also like um, the Dead Sea, for example, mm -hmm. right? Super salty, so you can just float in it without even trying, mm -hmm. right? So there you go, right? Salt makes water denser. Okay, so now that we established that, does this salinity profile align with our notion of density? Yes or no? So salt makes it denser. Does it align with our notion of density? Does it make sense? No? You want to explain? Well, because it's, it's just staying stable. Mm -hmm. And it's not, like, I don't know, it's not, like, going okay. up. Like, wouldn't it fluctuate more if it... No, it would not actually. It would not fluctuate more. Because you would think if it was increased salinity, then it would be a fewer, mm -hmm. and you would see more depth, not more depth, yeah. more, and like it would go. I, I think I know what you're saying. You want the water at the bottom to be higher. All salt, salty, yeah. more denser. Yeah. yeah, okay, so but what is the discrepancy? But that it describes that salt is still lighter still than salt. whatever is in the middle. Okay, so yeah, so you're water. pointing out which part of the graph? Which part of the graph has the discrepancy? The, the, the 500 step, going up and down, has a difference. So here? Yeah. Okay. The surface above 500 meters. Um, is heavier. It should be heavier, but what's wrong with that? If it's heavy, where should it be? At the bottom. At the bottom. At the bottom. But look, the heaviest water right here is at the top. the top. Right. Wow, that's crazy. It shouldn't be like that, right? See, so the salinity profile has something weird. It does not align with our notions of density, and we need to explore this, right? We need to figure out why is it that this salty water can float on top of this water, right? Yeah. Okay, so before we do that, let's just talk about the rest of the profile, right? This is the salinity profile. It is, for some reason, you know, saltier at the top, and then becomes less salty, and then it becomes slightly more salty as you go down. Right over here, Let's, <laughs> oops, okay, I forgot something. Uh, let's explain why uh, it became so salty at the top, right? So I have a couple of explanations of why the top is salty, but I don't have explanations of why it's allowed to remain there, all right? We'll talk about that one later. So how did the top become so salty? Well, starting from 500 down to the bottom, okay, that part is at least consistent, right? It increases in salinity, which makes sense because you want it to increase salinity with depth because it makes it heavier. But why is the top so salty? Well, here's the thing. The top is warmer than the rest of the ocean. So if it's warmer, warm water can dissolve more salt. Oh, so you can, you can hold more. Ah, I see. Okay, you're, you're doing a little foreshadowing. Good. Okay. But right. hold that thought. Okay. okay. Um, warm water can dissolve more salt, so the, the top can hold more salt. But how do we get that salt? Well, how would you increase the saltiness of a glass of salt water without putting more salt in there? Heat it. Heat it and then what? Make it, make it more salty. But why would that make it saltier? Evaporate. Okay. Evaporate. So what about the evaporation? What does evaporation oxygen. do? Oxygen. No, not oxygen. Does it mix the whole water when you pour it? It makes what? Oh, no, no, not the mixing. Don't worry about the mixing. <coughs> the rain. <laughs> okay, let's stay on one, one topic for now. We're talking about a glass of water with salt water in it, okay? Glass of salt water. How do we make it saltier without adding salt to it? Putting it, like maybe like you put it outside like the bird to put in it, but then it gets a little salty. Why? Why does that make it saltier? That doesn't make sense to me. Okay. <laughs> It makes more sense to me, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about this? Let, let's, let's change it around, and I, I'll come back to that question, okay? Let's just say that you have a cup of water, okay? A cup and a gallon of water, right? In each of them, a cup and a gallon, you're going to add one tablespoon of salt. One tablespoon in the cup and one tablespoon in the gallon. Which one will taste saltier? The, the cup. The, the cup? cup? Yeah. But you added the same amount of salt in both cases. But the gallon has more water. Okay, it has more water. Okay, well, good, good. Okay, the gallon has more water. 
but the same amount of salt. The cup has less water, but the same amount of salt, and it tastes saltier for some reason. So, so let's go back to that cup of salt water, and someone offer me a suggestion on how to make it saltier without increasing the amount of salt. Less water. Take out the water. Yeah. Water. <laughs> okay. Good. Taking out the water without taking the salt out, okay. because if you have less water, apparently it makes it saltier. Right? Mm -hmm. It increases the density of the salt in that solution. So here's the thing. If you can find a way to take water out without increasing the salt, it'll become saltier. Mm -hmm. All right? And that's what evaporation does. So it's not about the boiling or the oh, mixing so or anything. Evaporation takes water. Yes. God, I, I, evaporation takes water and, and it vaporizes. Leaves less, it leaves more salt behind. Yeah, it leaves the salt behind. Yeah. yeah. So the salt stays behind in the evaporation when the water leaves. Now there's less water, same amount of salt, so it gets saltier. Where is the only place in the ocean that evaporation is allowed to occur? At the top. At the top. Evaporation only occurs at the surface, right? That's the definition of evaporation, right? When water vaporizes at the surface of the liquid, okay? Boiling is not evaporation because boiling, the water vaporizes actually at the bottom because that's where the fire is, right? So evaporation only occurs at the surface, so that's what happens, right? It leaves the salt behind. That's one of the factors that increases the salt content at the surface, the evaporation of the water there. Right, the second one is sea ice formation, right? Let's talk about that one. Sea ice formation means when you create ice in the ocean, when you take seawater and freeze it. Why does that make the water saltier? Give you guys a hint, same reason as before. When you take the water and you freeze it, what do you think freezes? The water, but not the salt. Exactly. Good. Whenever you change the state of water, it'll leave behind the stuff that's dissolved, right? So when you form the sea ice, right, it leaves the salt behind. Only the freshwater freezes. So when you go look at a glacier in the ocean, it's a freshwater glacier. The Titanic struck a freshwater glacier in the middle of the ocean, right? Because when the ice froze, it's only the freshwater that came out, but the salt is still behind in the liquid. So there you go, right? The fact that when water changes state and the salt stays behind, right, we call that brine exclusion because brine means salt and excluded, right? You don't, you don't include the salt in the process of the change of state, right? You said uh, brine means salt? <laughs> yeah, brine means like salt. Okay, so there you go, right? If either water evaporates or it freezes, you'll leave the salt behind. Okay, good. So, let's think about this. We already established that evaporation occurs at the surface. Where is the only place that water is allowed to freeze? The surface. At the surface, why? Because you have the salt in the bottom. It's cold <laughs> good guess. Because it's good cold. guess, no. I want you guys to, you guys know this. I know you guys know this. How does ice behave in water? It, You guys drink beer all the time. Oh, dang. That's a beer question. Yeast? Yeast? No, 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 no. Well, let's stay on topic here. If the ice cubes go to the top. Ice floats in water. So if ice floats in water, then, you know, it can't form at the bottom. It's too, it's too light to form mm -hmm. at the bottom, right? Okay, the ice is going to form at the top because it because floats. It's because it removes the water. All right. What was that? Because it removes the water? No, 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 not because of that. It, it's just because it's lighter than, okay. than water. So since ice is lighter than water, it only forms at the top. All right, look, if you have a, rip, uh, sorry, a lake or a pond in a super cold winter and the top freezes over and you can go ice skating on it, the bottom is still liquid and there's fish down there you can fall through. Yeah. All right? Well, why does it freeze at the top? Because the ice at the top is floating on top of the liquid water at the bottom. You get it? Okay, so like sea ice formation can also only occur at the top. So therefore, the top experience with these two factors becomes saltier, right? So now we've been able to explain why is it saltier at the top of the ocean. We just have not been able to explain why is it allowed to remain there because now that it's salty and heavier, it should sink to the bottom, right? But it doesn't, right? We'll, we'll explore that eventually, right? Let's continue on with the profile. The profile has a depth in which the salt changes the fastest. 
It's called the halo twine, right? Halo twine, not because it, I mean, it has anything to do with halos or angels or anything. No, halo because um, this rock, known as halite, is just a fancy word for salt, right? Um, salt comes from this rock, halite, mm -hmm. right? And um, the salt that you guys eat is basically halite's sand. Right? So you guys all eat sand. Yeah. Right. Based from this rock, right? We don't eat sand from other rocks, hopefully, unless we're kids or something. But um, yeah, we eat sand from this rock. And halite, halo climb. There you go. Okay. So the depth at which the slaney changes fastest is the halo climb. Okay. Does that sound okay? Right. We're all good with that. Okay. So now let's combine the two profiles: temperature and salinity, and the fact that those two things contribute to density. We've been talking about density this whole time, right? The density profile. It looks like this. I want you guys to take a look at it, analyze it. Does it make sense to you guys? All right, what do you guys think? Does it make sense? <laughs> does, does this profile make sense? What do you guys think? Maybe we can, let's go, let's go uh, slow first. Tell me what's going on. Okay, light on the top, heavy on the bottom. Does that make sense though? Is it supposed to be like that? No, because no. of the salt. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry about the salt. Let's just worry about density in general. So it increases the carbon. So it's no, it makes, it makes sense. Why do you think it makes sense, Edith? Because as you're increasing, um, because density, because as you increase depth, the density, um, okay, gets let me rephrase this. What is the density heavy. here, high or low? It's low. It's low. low. It's low. How about here? High. 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 Should the water be denser at the bottom? Yes. Yes, yes because yeah. if it's heavy, it's got to be on Ooh, the bottom, right? The bottom. Okay, uh, how about this? This is less dense water. Should it be at the top? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's, the lighter. it's lighter, and lighter things should be floating on top of the heavy things. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's the type of, you know, thinking that you guys should be doing, right? Um, when you guys look at these profile, ask yourself, does it make sense according to you know your knowledge of density rules or something, right? Um, the bottom, right? The bottom is the densest, as you guys can see, and it should be the densest. Densest that should make sense to you guys. And if you go to the top, it's, oops, uh, it's the lightest, right? And guess what? It should be the lightest, right? It should be obvious to us that this makes sense because light things float on top of heavy things. So, so far, this density profile checks out, right? This, this is a profile that makes sense. We're all good with it. It even has a depth at which the density changes the fastest. In this case, it's called the pycnocline, right? I'm not completely sure why it's called the pycnocline, but it's okay. Let's just <laughs> learn that, right? Okay. So density profile looks all good, right? Let's take a look at all three profiles together and see what we got here, right? Domo climb, halo climb, pick no, or what am I saying? Temperature, salinity, and density profiles, right? Okay, let's analyze this real quick. The, you know, the temperature profile starts off warm. Warm water is less dense, sounds good to me. And then it gets colder. Cold water is more dense. Sounds good to me, right? Let's look at this one. Salt water is supposed to be denser. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. A little bit of problem here. Okay, we're going to try to resolve this. Then it gets less dense, but at least from here it gets more dense, and that part is okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, just this top part. Okay, so we need to explain why is that part allowed to be saltier. We know why it's saltier. Evaporation, sea ice formation. We just don't know why it's allowed to remain there, because it should sink to the bottom if it's heavier, mm -hmm. right? So for that, we need to look at these actual numbers, all right? So I'm gonna show you guys these actual numbers at the top. It's a little hard to read, but as you guys can see, right here, or maybe you can't see, I'll read it to you guys. At the surface of the ocean, this profile says it's 35.5 parts per mil. Uh, that means parts per thousand, right? Mil means thousand. 
Um, I don't really know why they use parts per thousand. They should just say 3.55%. That sounds a lot more, that just makes a lot more sense in our normal brains, right? So 3.55% salt, and at the lowest point is 345 How is the salt big change? What, is it a big change or a small change? It's a small change. It's a small change, right? It didn't change that much. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Look. It only goes from 3.5 to 3.4. Only like 1% or 0.1% change. That's not that much at all, right? Okay, well, if that's not a big change, then how much heavier do you think this water is than this water? A lot heavier or not much heavier? Not, not, not much. much. Not much heavier. Yeah. Slating didn't change much, density doesn't change much. Right, that's basically half of the problem right there, right? We've already got half of it done. Let's look at the temperature. The temperature starts up here. That's like 23 degrees C, right? 23 degrees C, how many is that? That's like 75 or so. That's around 75 degrees F. Okay, it's kind of warm. Um, let's look at this right here. This is four, four degrees C. That's like 40 F, 40 F. That's like your refrigerator, okay? So you, you think it's a huge change. I do too, right? Um, a difference from 75 to 40 degrees F that's quite the difference in temperature. So do you think that this water is a lot heavier than this water? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It is, because the temperature is really different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you guys can see, since the temperature fluctuates so much, then in this case, the temperature is, you know, controls the density more than the salinity does. It has more of an influence, right. at least in this scenario, right? In this scenario, the temperature has more of an influence because it has such a drastic change, but the salinity, so that one barely affects the density, right? Like, let's just say you and your friend. You, you got a 97% on the test, your friend got a 97.1%. Is everybody gonna think that he's smarter than you? No. No, that's like barely any difference. 0.1% difference, who cares, right? Yeah. So I would say that this water, although slightly saltier than that, is probably not much heavier, okay? So in this case, we should not worry about the fact that this water is saltier. It doesn't affect the density that much anyways. It's just so warm up here that that does affect the density. So just think about it this way. Salt water may be denser at the top, but at the top, at the same time, it is just so much warmer that this tiny change in salinity doesn't even matter, right? It's just so warm at the top, it kind of takes over the density, right? And then the saltiness doesn't change much, so it doesn't really affect it at all. Right. I can blow up the graphs right here so you guys can see. Barely changes, changes a lot. Mm -hmm. right. I guess I meant 23, but it doesn't matter. Changes a lot, right? All right, no, never mind, it is 22. But it doesn't matter, right? That one changes a lot, this one changes a little bit. So at least in the ocean, the temperature has more of an influence on the density than the salinity does. Sound okay? Yeah. All right. So yeah, the temperature has more of an effect. Um, I'm not saying that the temperature, you know, has more of an effect than salinity in general. I'm just saying in this case, because the salinity barely changes. In fact, if you want to get into the nitty gritty, I'd say that salinity actually has more of an effect than temperature does. Um, it's just that in this case, the salinity barely changes, so it doesn't really get to exercise its influence, right? Let's just say that we allowed the salinity to change as much as the temperature did. So for example, what if the salinity changed from four parts per mil to 22 parts per mil, just like the temperature changed from four degrees C to 22 degrees C. Mm -hmm. If they change the same amount like that, well then I bet that the top of the water would not be the saltiest, uh -huh. because in that case, salinity would start to have a big influence, mm -hmm. right? But no, salinity barely changes, so So why is the top allowed to be saltier? Because it's not saltier by much, and it's so warm up there. That's gonna float up there anyways, right? Okay, good. So any questions on these profiles so far? We're all good. What was it that you said? Um, it's not that. It's not that, uh, I think you're trying to say that um, temperature has more of an effect on salinity 
in general, that's not exactly true. It's more so that in this case, temperature had more of an effect just because temperature changed a lot and salinity did not. Right? So if we want to look at the general case, salinity probably actually has more of an effect. But that's only if we allow them to change equally. In this time, uh, case, they didn't change equally. Like, look, a big change, no change. Right? So if we just say temperature controls density more than salinity? Um, the because salinity didn't change much. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. you got to add that part in because remember, the disclaimer right here, salinity actually has more of an effect, right? So just saying that one statement is not completely correct. Okay. Right? But in this case, it's because the salinity barely changed. That, that's what happens. Okay, okay. so let's, um, let's do a quick review, right? Let's draw those three profiles real quick just to see how we're doing. Right? Okay. okay. You guys want to try to do this? Oh. You guys want to try to do this? You already did it? Okay, Michelle, why don't you do the first one without looking? Here, without here, looking? Here. Yeah, without looking. You so choose. don't put the don't put the temperatures or anything either. No, no, you can you uh, you don't uh, just just the line, just the line, just the line, just the line. Just draw that line. Okay, you can do whichever one you want. Any of those three, All right? You just can do the first one. That's fine. <laughs> You're just so careful. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Good. What do you guys think? Is that, is that, does that look like a good temperature profile to you guys? Yeah. yeah. It does. All right. Good job. Okay. Who has the slanty profile? Who has it? Uh, Besides Michelle. We got to give someone else a chance here. Mm -hmm. We forgot. You know, this is the best way for you to learn experience. Oh, Edith is getting up. Okay. Here you go. Let's try this out. The that first was part was close. Right. Just over a little more yeah, to yeah. your left. Uh, no, no, no. More to your left. Just oh, start. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Then. No. And then a little curve. And then <laughs> <laughs> a little curve. Just helping her out here. Okay. Just helping okay. her. Okay. That's fine. That's good. I remember the uh, the increase. Okay. Sorry. It's it's fine. Okay, good job. Okay, well let's let's work with that. Okay, we can we can work with this. So which part of this can we agree with? The top part. I think the top part looks okay. Part. No, I might I might change it just slightly, maybe like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, but what about this part? It needs to curve. It needs to curve. And then it needs which way? To the right. Towards the right. It needs yeah. to increase slightly there like you this. Oh yeah. that's right. That's okay, remember this. So salinity profile increases slightly. From 500 meters down. Okay. But good. Yeah, that was a good try. Thank you for volunteering. Okay, so the last one. I, I'm i going to say just put this out there. The last one's the easiest one. So, anybody want to give that one a try? The density. Wait, wait. Don't, don't ah, tell hey, me. Maybe come on. <laughs> it just goes. It just goes. It like just it. goes. Yeah, yeah. You can do this. Thinking about. No, 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 don't, don't worry about <laughs> what the shape looks like. Just reason it out in your head. Where should the light water be and where should the heavy water be? Left to right, remember? <laughs> left, uh, okay. left to right. Start to the left. left no, you guys right. are confusing her. No, no, you guys so are just telling her. A little more in the middle. <laughs> like, right here? Over to, to the left. A little okay. left. My left or your over there? It's the same. It's, it's it's the same. I remember the bottom part being like that, right? That's too far to the left. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're just going to make like a little... Okay, what's the trend? What's the trend? Does density increase as you go down or does it decrease as you go down? Increase. Increase. It increases. Okay. So as you go down, 
should we go this way or should we go this way? This way. Yeah, because this increases, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And then you can do your straight down thing that you mm -hmm. felt like doing earlier. Okay. It's basically opposite of the halo climb. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's not the opposite of that oh, one either, but... Matt, why did I get the trickiest one? Is it? No, 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 no. You're just, you're just on the spot, that's all. You're just under pressure. But it's not the trickiest, is it? You got this. Remember, density increase as you go down. So we already established what direction you want it to go. It's down, right? Well, I mean, it has to go down, but left or right. So, like that? No? It's all right. Well, it's just a little right. more of a curve. I'm not a Picasso, but a little <laughs> more of a curve. This is not an art project here. Right. This is just a line. Okay, good try. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, let's let's work with this. Okay, so the density does stabilize at the bottom, but which part do we have an issue with? The top. The top. Okay, what's going on at the top? It's going straight to the right. It's got to be pretty pronounced, yeah. right? Okay, so like it starts out low and it increases. That's probably good enough, right? And then this line. What's that line? Wait, wait, wait! Don't say it. What's that line called? That D word. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it starts with a P. P. Why? <laughs> That's uh, a Y. Um, PYC. Pick no Pick your. Pick no. They all end the same way. Pick no Pick All right, we got it. You'll get it eventually, okay? So look, pick no coin, right? That's the density profile. Okay, make sure we got all three of those down. We know the attributes, we can explain their trend, right? Can you actually scientifically um, create hollow clients? Like, like you know, put them in a jar, put a heater, and then make them a salt salt, and like almost no salt in the middle kind of situation? Oh, that's crazy. Mm. Um, I don't. Uh, if you, you can do so that if, if, like, if you have like, like different a, like a freezer pot right on the bottom, so it's yeah. always cold. Yeah. And then have a heater on the top. So yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. Freezer and heater. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So you want to make the salty water at the top warmer. Yeah. Yeah, you could totally you could and do that. There would be salt water in the bottom. Salt water on the bottom because it's colder, it's and, and then colder. fresh water in the middle that's cold. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would work, right? You can have cold salty water, then cold fresh water, and then warm salty, salty, water. salty water. Yeah, so but not that salty. You don't want to be that salty. So you don't because it might sink. Yeah. So you don't want to put too much salt then. Yeah, you don't want to put too much salt in the top water. Just a little bit. Is it possible to have like just one portion of salt, you mix it, yeah. and then you turn both sides on? Uh, no, 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 no. If, if, if you mix split? the salt, it, it would just be the same saltiness up and down. <coughs> and the only so, factor that so, would change So you'd have to actually, like, calculate how much salt mm -hmm. will be. Yeah, and you'd have, to, you'd have to pour them in separately. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> pour the first one in, and then pour the second one in, and then pour the second one in. That's the only way. Right. Okay. Um, it won't separate it out itself. If you just did salt water, it'll just remain salt water. And the top will be warm, and the bottom will be cold. That's it. I see. But that's a good suggestion. That's cool. It's good that you're thinking. Right. Okay, you guys, let's move on. So the next profile will come. This is the fourth profile. We're going to shy away from these oceanographic profiles, and we're going to start talking about more biological-related profiles, like this. This is the nutrient profile of two different nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, right? Why do we talk about those two? Because nitrogen and phosphorus are the two most important nutrients because it basically all boils down to what, uh, what elements are common in your body, right? Or in all living things. So, does anybody know what's the most common element? Um, oxygen? Let me see that. In your body. <laughs> okay, you know, Edith had a pretty close answer, but it's not quite correct. She said carbon. I, I'm not gonna lie, that's a tempting answer because we're carbon-based life forms, mm -hmm. right? But that's actually number two, right? The most common is actually hydrogen, all right? And the second is carbon. Third oh. is it would be CO2, oxygen. It's oxygen, yeah. and then we know two. Well, you don't have to put that anyway. Mm. The the fourth most common is nitrogen. The fifth one, can you guess? Phosphorus. It's gonna be phosphorus. All right, see, considering the fact that, you know, nitrogen and phosphorus are the fourth and fifth most common, you know, you, it makes sense that they're 
some the two most important nutrients, right? Well, where do they come from? Nitrogen starts in the atmosphere, nitrogen gas, and in fact, it's super abundant, 80%, right? 80% of the atmosphere. However, nobody can use it. Nobody knows how to take the nitrogen gas. We can only use nitrogen when it's bonded to oxygen in other forms, such as nitrates, ammonia, or something like that. We can't use straight up gas, so what do we do? We have to get some sort of bacteria to do like nitrogen fixation. You guys ever heard of that before? Maybe not, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, if you want nitrogen to be a viable nutrient, then it has to come in the form that is usable by other organisms, yeah. right? And nitrogen is only useful when it comes from dead things, right? Dead things. That's where nitrogen, the nutrients, comes from. Existing biological matter or, you know, things that die or droppings, right? Poop, waste, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. That's where you get your nitrogen from, right? Phosphorus, slightly different. Plants can take phosphorus from the soil um, you, the original source of phosphorus is rocks, exactly. So here's the thing. People say that, like to say that a volcanic soil is really fertile. I don't know, yes or no, yes and no. I mean, kind of. If the volcano just erupted and there's nothing living there, well, I'm not gonna say there's no nutrients, but if there were nutrients at all, which one would it be? just erupted, made a new island, it's lava all over the place, which nutrient is available? Phosphorus. Phosphorus? Okay, but there's nothing living there yet, so you can't have nitrogen, all right? How do you think the nitrogen gets exposed, or gets introduced to the island? Living matter. Well, yeah, living matter, but who brings it over? Um, animals. What animal? Birds. Birds, yeah, see, that's how you can get to the island, by flying, right? That's the only way. So. When birds go over there, what do you think they do on the island? Eat it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, they poop on the island. That's where you get the nitrogen from. Right? Right? It's called guano, right? It's on the white stuff. Okay, so anyways, let's look at the nutrient profiles in the ocean. Right? Um, they have the same trend, right? You guys know this? They have the same trend, so it doesn't really matter which one you're looking at. Um, how do they start out? Water a little bit. Sorry? How do they start out? Um, water a little. They start a little. A little, right? Almost none. Actually, you know what? Pretty much none, right? Mm -hmm. There's not that much at the top at all. It's interesting. Very little nutrients at the surface. If you go down a little bit, what happens? It increases. It increases. increases. And then they increase. And then keep going down and. They stay the same. Well, hold on. Well, no. well, not here. Nitrogen. nitrogen. From here, it stabilizes. Oh, not it yet, decreases. before it stabilizes. It decreases, decreases a little bit yeah. and then yeah. it stabilizes. Oh, right. All right, so the point oh, is. It starts at zero, and then it increases to a high amount, and then it decreases slightly. Oh, okay. right? It decreases slightly in both cases. Right? This is not just nitrogen and phosphorus. So let's look at three other nutrients. Look at the red line. Right? The red line here. Actually, the first one is phosphorus again. Um, but let's look at the other two. Right? Which one's this? Do you know what that is? That's silicon. That's silicon, yeah. And what's this? DA? That's um, is that bacteria. <laughs> bacteria, good guess. No, we're talking elements here. Oh. Elements. Is it basalt? It's not basalt. That's a type of rock, oh, but okay. good guess. B A is um, barium. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, anyways, these are three, two other nutrients, and look at the red line. Behaves roughly the same way. Look at it. At the top, yeah. it starts at almost nothing, increases, and then decreases, decreases a little bit. Yeah. Right. So what's going on here, right, with these nutrients? They start out with almost none, increase, and then decrease slightly, right? Nutrients has a strictly biological origin and influence to it, right? Mm -hmm. So let's explore. Why is the nutrient profile, in general, looking like this? Starting low, going up, and going down a little bit. Nutrient profile in general, right? Well, we just have to realize there are animals and plants, there are organisms out there that use nutrients and the organisms out there that produce nutrients, right? Who do you think is who? Who uses, who produces? Um, plants the produce. Animals. Animals do. Mm. Okay, Fish. so you think an, um, plants produce, you think animals produce. Well, let's, well, let's argue about it. Which, who's correct here? Why do you think animals produce nutrients? Because they, they throw waste. 
<laughs> okay, um, where out of their body do they throw waste? Um, shit. Yeah, okay, that's good enough, right? Okay, so <laughs> animal waste is nutrients. What about you? Why do you think plants produce nutrients? Um, um, well, they usually produce nutrients through photosynthesis, but I don't know if that occurs. Ah, okay, okay. Let's answer that question. What do plants produce through photosynthesis? They produce oxygen, oxygen. and they produce glucose, which, I mean, sort of is a nutrient, but the thing is that glucose is locked away in its body. We're talking about that nutrients are inside the environment, free floating nutrients, for other things to go out and get. Because all the animals produce a lot everywhere. Yeah, okay, see, the animals, they make it all go all over the place, right? Um, if you, you're a farmer and you want your soil to be more nutritious for your plants, what do you put on there? Cow poop. Yeah, fertilizer, which is cow poop, right? Exactly. See, so like, who's producing the nutrients? The cow was, right? Yeah. Yeah. right. Looks like the animals produce nutrients. And why do you put the nutrients there? Because the farmer's trying to grow Plant. plants. Because the plants use those nutrients. Okay. We got it, right? Yeah. So plants use the nutrients, animals produce the nutrients. So with those two rules in mind, let's take a look at what's going on here, okay? Um, not that many nutrients at the top. Why? Because mm -hmm. animals don't use the top. Maybe less animals producing? Okay, that's a viable option, but not completely logical because, I mean, the surface of the ocean has a lot of animals. <clears throat> that's true. So do we have another possibility? What about plants? No, plankton. plankton. What is that? What's that? Can you say that again? Plankton. Oh, plankton. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We will talk more about plankton later. For now, let's let's uh, hold that thought because it, it's a little bit too hard for me to explain to you guys right now. Um, let's just talk about the two organs, plants and animals, right? Okay. So it's a. I told you guys it's a very good suggestion that there's not that many animals at the top, is but that's just simply not true. The food is. Think about something else. Okay, so it's not less, the animals. There's less on the top, so, and that's because they, when they, when they produce the nutrients, it falls to the ground. You know that is that is actually one of the factors. I'll give you that. Okay, you solved the forty percent of the puzzle. Okay, it's because when nutrients are produced, gravity causes it to sink. Okay, that that is part of it, but it's not the main part. The main part, I'll give you a hint, has to do with plants. What do plants do? No, no, we eat just evolved. Yeah, they eat it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Plants, right. what do they do again? They eat, they eat fertilizer. <laughs> okay, fine. They, they, they use the, the nutrients, they right? Okay, so if you use the nutrients, how many nutrients are left? More or less? Less. Less, less. less. okay. Um, if I told you that there were more plants at the surface, would you guys agree? Or would you guys, uh, what do you guys I think? don't know, because there's a bunch of seaweed out there. But is it at the surface or is it at the bottom? The on the surface. On Why the is surface. it on the surface? Uh, because because the animals. Because sunlight. All right. There's more sunlight at the top of the ocean, so there's more plants at the top of the ocean. Right. And if there's more plants, then what are they doing to the nutrients? They're eating. They're, eating they're, eating they're using it all up. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, I get it. So there is actually more plants on top of the there ocean. There are actually more bottom. plants on top. Okay, so we're learning here, right? Yeah, definitely. A lot of plants at the top because it's closer to the sun, and they're using up all the nutrients, so there's not that many nutrients. Does that sound okay? Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's try to explain this. Why does the nutrient go up sharply at this depth? Well, we mentioned one reason. The nutrients are sinking down there, gravity. Sorry. But what's another reason why nutrients increase as you go down? Uh, less plants. Less plants, okay, less plants using it up so it starts to pile up. But what else? <clears throat> Who else is there besides plants? And animals. Oh, animals. There's more abundance because of the animals. Yeah, now that there's animals here and less plants, animals, what are they doing again? They're eating, eating. They're eating. No, they're not eating it. They're producing, they're producing, they're producing it. Producing animals it. produce the nutrients, right? Yeah. So more animals, less plants over here. So there's more nutrients. Okay. Let's keep going down a little bit going down to the bottom of the ocean and you see the amount of nutrients actually decreases a little bit. Because 
Certain animals can't live in that habitat. Okay, you know, well, we can go with that. So, what would you like to say about the number of animals here versus the number of animals here? It decreases, it decreases as, as um, you go deeper into the ocean. Okay, so the amount of animals at the very bottom is a lot less than the amount of animals here. Yeah. So, if there's less animals producing, does it make sense that it goes down? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. There's less animals producing nutrients, so there's mm -hmm. less nutrients now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's our explanation here, right? At the very top, plants are using it all up, right? But then as you go down, there's less plants and more animals, and then it's also sinking, right? So those are the reasons, okay? And then therefore, all the nutrients are locked away at the bottom of the ocean, not much is at the top. So when we get certain events in which we can take the water from the bottom of the ocean and bring it to the top, of upwelling. Do you guys see why that's a good thing? Why is that a good thing? We can take the water at the bottom and bring it to the top. Because the nutrients are on the bottom. Yeah, because you can take the nutrients from the bottom and put them on the top, which is very much needed because they don't have that much nutrients. On the yeah. Okay, we'll talk about upwelling later, right? Like tomorrow, probably. Or I meant you guys will hear about it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Indirectly. Okay, does that make sense? Nutrient profile? Yeah. All good with that? So with this same thinking, this same type of thinking, let's go through and talk about the other two profiles, right? The other two profiles. Carbon dioxide and oxygen, right? These two profiles follow almost the same rules, right? So let's look at it for a second. Let's look at the oxygen profile. Oxygen profile, well, wow, look at that. There's a lot of oxygen at the top. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay, why is there a lot of oxygen at the top? Because the plants are at the top. There's a lot of plants on the top, and what do plants do? They create oxygen. They produce oxygen, very good. Plants at the surface produce oxygen, and as you go down in depth, less plants, less plants, less plants producing oxygen, more animals, animals using it up. So now you use it up, and now there's not that much, right? Okay? More animals using it up. If you go all the way down to the bottom, oxygen goes up. Why is oxygen increasing at the bottom of the ocean? Less animals. Less animals, so animals use it. So if there's less usage, it piles up, right? right? You, you make a lot of money. If you just be more conservative with your spending habits, you have more money, right? right? So yeah, you know, you, you spend less oxygen, you have more oxygen, all right? Less animals at the bottom. Okay, we can translate all that to this profile. First of all, can you guys notice the shape of these two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like same. Mirror identical. image, right? Okay, yeah, they're, they're symmetrical. All right, so that's exactly the way you should be thinking because animals take oxygen and turn it into carbon dioxide. Plants take carbon dioxide and turn it into oxygen. Okay. So if all the plants are producing the oxygen, what are they doing to the carbon dioxide? Decreasing. Using it up mm -hmm. to produce the oxygen. You guys see? Okay. It's the opposite, right? It should make sense, right? Let's look at that. Carbon dioxide profile is exactly the opposite because at the top, the plants are using it, so there's not that much. Mm -hmm. Go down a little further, less plants using, more animals, animals producing. producing. Animals produce carbon dioxide, so if you produce more, and it just piles up there, mm -hmm. and then if you go to the very bottom, less, less, less animals, animals, less carbon dioxide. Less less carbon dioxide. dioxide. Right. Exactly, all right? So, do you notice that since carbon dioxide and nutrients are both produced by animals, they follow the same pattern. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. The only difference is nutrients start out at zero. zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make sure you guys got that part down. Carbon dioxide does not quite start at zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Cool. Good. So we got all the profiles down, right? These are the other three, and now we have all six. You guys see that these three are oceanographic in origin, but these three are biological. It has a lot to do with biology. Right. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's superimpose the oxygen and carbon dioxide profiles and put them on the same profile. So what we get, right? Here's oxygen, here's carbon dioxide, okay? Um, you notice they cross over. Okay. Right where they cross over, that depth is called the compensation depth, right? Compensation depth, what does that mean? Equal amount of O2 and CO2. Yeah, they're basically equal in the region, but more importantly, in oceanography, compensation refers to an equilibrium, mm -hmm. right? Equilibrium in chemistry means the forward and backward reactions rates are equal, 
and the forward and reverse reaction rates are equal. So in this case, what is the forward reaction? Oxygen turning into carbon dioxide, the reverse reaction is carbon dioxide turning into oxygen. Okay, so in this case, we say that the rate of the oxygen turning into carbon dioxide is equal to the rate of the carbon dioxide turning into oxygen. The rate of usage of oxygen is equal to the rate of the formation of oxygen. That's what's happening at the compensation step, right? Every time you produce some oxygen, you can use it right away and turn it into carbon dioxide. Every time you produce carbon dioxide, you can use it right away and turn it into oxygen. Right? Every time you use up the carbon dioxide, you will get more carbon dioxide because you'll use up the oxygen. Every time you use up the oxygen, you'll get it back because you're going to use up the carbon dioxide. Right? So the rate of use is equal to the rate of formation of oxygen, or say it again, the rate of use is equal to the rate of formation of carbon dioxide. You can use either one, just don't put them in the same sentence. Don't say the rate of use of oxygen is equal, equal to the rate of formation of carbon dioxide. Right, don't say that. Say, say, use the same chemical in each case, right? Rate of use of oxygen equals the rate of formation of oxygen. Rate of use of carbon dioxide equals the rate of formation of carbon dioxide. Okay? So if that's the case, and you guys all know that plants produce oxygen and will use oxygen, what well, can you guys tell me about the amount of plants and animals at the composition? Amount of plants and animals. They use up the same amount. They use up the same amount, but like how many are there? The amount of plants versus the amount it's, of animals. It should be equal. It should be about it's equal. equal. Just about equal, right? Mm -hmm. Because the plants are producing oxygen, the animals are using it up at the same rate. So it must be roughly equal at the compensation step. Right? So with that, we can explore above and below the compensation step. Right, let's look at below first. What is there more of below? There's more of the gas. There's more carbon dioxide. You can tell because it's further towards the right. The right. Okay. So at the below the compensation depth, the rate of formation of carbon dioxide exceeds that of oxygen. Mm -hmm. So if that were the case, then what would you guys say about the amount of plants and amount of animals? There's more animals. There's more plants. animals than. Yeah, more animals than plants below the compensation depth, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, how about above? Above, what is there more of? There's more plants, more plants, plants than animals. Well, hold on, take one step back. There's more of which chemical first? Oh, oxygen. There's more oxygen. See, the blue line right here is further to the right. So, what was your inference again? The conclusion? More, plant, more, more plants, plants than animals at the top of the ocean. Right. right, very good. Okay, see, so you guys can tell where all the plants and where all the animals are by looking at their relative you know, distance from the compensation depth. Okay, compensation depth, they're equal, but above there's more plants and below there's more animals. Okay, that's why it causes these things to cross over and stuff like that. How do you guys feel? You guys are all okay with this? Yeah. Right, Michelle, you're looking a little bit. Yeah, you yeah. catch it up? Okay, great. Yeah. We all good? How about you? Yeah. <laughs> I got it. You got it? I okay. got it. Well, you know, it's just the first day, so that's what we do. Okay, so anyways, now that you know, we're we're kind of starting to edge our way towards biology a little bit away from oceanography. Right, so at this point, since we're talking about oxygen formation, it's a good time to talk about plants because they produce the oxygen. Right, so this is our segue into plants. Photosynthesis. Combine those two, we get primary production. Yeah, primary production. Sorry, okay, jumping ahead. Okay, you guys want to take a break?